everybody fire up Maya. We're going to focus on that for a minute. And uh, so what I want to show you guys today is uh, some texturing techniques so you can texture your weapons. Um, and typically what I've done in the past is we've all made a weapon, same weapon, and we all textured it together. But uh, in, in doing this process a lot, I found it's faster for me just to, just how I did the modeling thing with you guys last time, where I just show you some techniques and then have you guys start trying it on your own immediately. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, most of you guys know Maya relatively well by now, so I'm not going to go over all the basics. But uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I want you to split your view in Maya. So on the left-hand side, um, in the toolbar, there's something called Panel Layout. And go ahead and click that Panel Layout. And it's going to split your view into two. And I'll keep my mouse over it so you can see where it's at. Um, yeah, left and right is good. Um, did it, did it split it top and top and bottom? Um, that's another one that you can use. Actually, that might be a little bit better. If you hold down your space bar and then up in the upper right hand corner, right click and hold. There's one that says. Um, Hyper shade render perspective. It splits it into three. Nah. Yeah, this one might be a little bit too big for now. We don't really need to mess with the hyper shade. I actually, <coughs> splitting your view in two is probably the best thing. You just want an equal view in two here. You want your your um, your perspective on the on the right, and the the this on the left for now. And what I want you to do is in your left hand view, go up to panels, panel, and change that to UV texture editor. You should be able to close out panels. So you close out one of those panels on your left. I don't know what you did. Oh, okay. I see where that goes. Yeah, so panels, panel, UV texture editor. So on the left, you should have your UV texture editor. And on the right, you should have your perspective view here. Yeah, you can go to show and turn off grid. Okay. And well, we want to. I, I like having up there. Just times I want to get a better look. Yeah, at it. but we're working in an empty scene, by the way. So go ahead and save your your weapons or whatever, and uh, open up a new scene. So file new scene. <coughs> yeah. All right, everybody got their view split. UV texture on the left perspective on the right. You just click on this little icon in the bottom left hand corner of the toolbar. It's called panel layout. You should be okay. You're, you're okay with that. You just want to see these two screens. All right. So everybody there, anybody not here or close? As long as you see it, you should be okay. Um, another thing you could do, I think, layouts. You could go to a panel, uh, panels, panel, 
our panels layout and do uh, you could do two planes side by side and then you can just pick go into panels panel UV texture editor and panels perspective perspective so you can you can just split your view so you go to panels layout uh, split and then you just pick whatever it doesn't matter what side it's on okay moving on here uh, so the UV texture editor is a view where we're going to basically see all the the UVs for our objects and I'm sure some of you guys are probably like what the heck is he talking about so I'm gonna show you so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out our UVs like this and these are kinda like the faces here that you see and you you do what's a, a process which is called unwrapping where you unwrap your object like you would unwrap a present right and yeah but over time you know you make less and less of those mistakes but anyway you can see so in Maya in this upper quadrant here we're gonna unwrap our weapons and they're gonna look like this and then what you do is you then this exports in Photoshop and then you lay out a texture over this so like like this and then it shows up on your 3D object. And uh, anyway, I don't worry about understanding that too terribly much. I just wanted to give you kind of a where the heck we are going uh, before we get there kind of thing. All right, so uh, the first thing we're gonna do, so the 2D texture editor view here is just like any other 2D view, it's not 3D. So you can, you just hold alt and you can navigate, you can zoom in. Um, you can snap to these grid points. You can you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, and what I want you to do is go ahead and make a box in your make a box in your uh, your view here. It can be any size, shape, box doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. And so yeah, anytime you make a primitive, Maya starts off with an automatic unwrap okay but typically um, it's usually not going to be exactly what you want okay so what we're going to do is we're going to use kind of like a virtual camera and we are going to take pictures of the sides and top and bottom of this box and then position them in here strategically okay so I say like a like a camera because that's what it is. It, it projects. It's called a projection, um, but it is like a camera. It basically takes the picture of the side and then puts it over here. And so that's really easy to do um, if you just right click on your um, <coughs> on your box here and go to face and select one of the faces, preferably the so a side, and then hit W. Okay, so when you hit W, I want you to go up to, at the top, there should be something that says Create UVs and an option box for planar uh, mapping. Okay, go ahead and move that off to the side. Create UVs, planar mapping option box. Okay, and what we're going to do with this basically what this does this is our camera okay it essentially takes a picture of the side of this object here and then puts it over here and then we're gonna adjust that and move it around but first we need to take the picture okay and there's a checkbox in here we always wanna keep this checkbox on it's called keep image width height ratio so that's when that takes a picture it's gonna keep the ratio of height to width okay we gotta keep that on And the next thing you want to do is we need to understand which direction, and we need to tell Maya which direction to take this picture. Can anybody take, and that will be in the X, Y, or Z axis. Can anybody take a guess as to which axis we would take this picture in? 
z. And the reason we'll take it in z is really easy, because if you select the face and you hit W to move, you can see that the what you can see what color the arrow is facing. And then you look down and you correspond that color to your little your little compass down here. And as you can see, the arrow facing in the direction of that face is blue. And so you match it up with this little compass, and that blue is Z. So go ahead and click Z, and then hit Apply. Does that make sense? Right. So, uh, so what happens is, as you can see, automatically it it had when we created that box, it had unwrapped uh, that that box completely. But what we did is a custom projection of that side, and so it ripped out one of those sides and put it here. Okay, and as you can see, we can we can move this around now. Um, and a technique that I want you guys to use is called. And what I want you to do is just kind of move this outside the the gray area for now, that side. Okay. So I'm going to go over this process one more time to make sure everybody's got it. Okay. So all you're going to do is you're going to right click on your box and go to face and select a side face. And you're going to hit W to make your little mover arrow come up just like you're going to move a face around. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to create planar mapping option box. And now in order to determine which axes we're going to we're going to take this picture of this side in, we need to look at the arrow that corresponds to our little compass down here. And that arrow is blue. It's headed in the direction of that face. So that's going to be a blue Z. So go ahead and click Z. And ma always make sure keep image width height ratio is checked on. And then go ahead and hit apply. And now it's, yeah. So, so you go ahead, once you project that, a little manipulator is going to come up, OK? Now in your 2D texture editor, that face is automatically selected, and the mover is automatically come up. If it's not, go ahead and hit W in your 2D texture editor. And you can drag that square out off to the side. See how I've done that? I've dragged it off to the side. It's like you move anything else in Maya. Go ahead and take a second to um, make sure you're doing what I'm doing here. Okay, and um, everybody there? Everybody good? Anna, go help me. All right, for all you rock stars that want to move ahead, what I want you to do is since there is um we're going to have both of these sides of the box take up the same texture space so instead of using one side to project we're going to shift select the other side as well this side and this side and project them both at once oh, yep because the b they're both going to be the same color so there's no reason to use different space on your map. Does that make sense? To the rock stars? So reselect that side, then shift select the back side, and then apply again. And it's going to be the same square, but now, as you can see, 
one square on the left will now color two sides. Does that make sense? And now I want you, it is definitely efficient. Now I want you to do the other sides. So select the other sides, pick the right axes, project and move that off, and then do the top and the bottom, project and move that off. So you should have three squares moved off to the left, or right, whatever. And you're going to have to change the axes based off of the direction for each. So for example, the top and the bottom would be the Y, and the other side that you were working with would be X. But you got to choose, choose which one. And it's real important you understand how to, how to choose which axes. So just look at your little compass. Is Okay. All right. <clears throat> and then Rockstar is what I want you to do is move all these new pieces into the gray area and squeeze them all in there. And the way you do that is really easy. You just right click on any of them and go to UV. And you can drag a box and select. And you can move. You can rotate. And go ahead and drag them all in there and squeeze them as efficiently as possible using as much of that texture space as you can. And the way you determine how much uh, texture space to take up here is the objects or the, the textures on your, on your object that are the most detailed are going to take the most space up. No, you can you right click right click in there in in your gray box and go to UV, just like you would right click on your box in the perspective to select a face, vertice, or edge. So you want to select UVs in here. These UVs are new. Okay, they're not a face, they're not an edge, and they're not a vertice. They're kind of like vertices, but um, right right click on it, go to UV. Drag a box over the corners. You're dragging. You're looking for corners here. Uh, you want to size them. Basically, what you want to do is use as much of your texture space as possible. One of these I had to actually rotate 90 degrees, and there's a little red rotators up here that help you rotate these 45 and 90 degrees perfectly. What's that? Yeah, you just squeeze them, squeeze them in as efficiently as you can. You want to take up as much texture space as possible. And does it not matter if you size them like, is that going to affect things later on? No. No. You want to, texture artists are really efficient with their texture space usage. As you can see, I've squeezed them all in here really tight. Does anybody need any help? You ain't doing nothing. We're moving real fast through this, guys. So make sure you make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, what is this? What is this called that we're doing right now? We're unwrapping a model. Okay. To, to UV 
Yeah, we're unwrapping the UVs of a model to texture it. Yeah, you try and squeeze them in. You want to use as much of this texture space as possible. Right. Make it as e be as efficient as you can. The more texture space you use, the higher detail your textures will be. All right, who's not here yet? Anybody? You need some help? Right click and hold. For the UV, drag a box around that.
said yes. Alright, everybody good? Are we all here? Are we all here? Close? Okay. I'm going to show that. Planer for uh, a lot of the time, yeah. Okay. It's really kind of easy. Well, it just I'm just thinking, thinking of all my how many planes are actually on the pistol I'm making, and it's, it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> well, you won't just do individual faces. You're going to like project big sections of that pistol, and you're going to do most of your work in Photoshop. But you just need to project sections. Like you can project the handle, you can project the top part, maybe the thing. And it's in sections. So you lay it out. You'll lay it out in sections, just like this is laid out in sections. Anwar, how are we doing? Huh? Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys, let's move on. All right. So the next step here is we've laid out our object here. Now we got to texture it. Okay. Uh, so what I want you to do is in your UV texture editor, make sure your box is selected, and you're in object mode. So right-click on it, go to object mode. Make sure when your box is selected here, make sure it's got green sides. Okay, so we have the box selected. And then go to polygons in your UV texture editor. You can close out of your uh, create UVs box. We won't need that anymore. UV texture editor. And polygons. And all the way at the bottom is something called UV snapshot dot dot dot. And you, if you look up at my screen, you can see where I got that and where I'm going. All right, go ahead and click that, and it should bring it up. Everybody there? All right. Yes. So what we're going to do is we are going to take a picture of our UV texture editor here so that we can bring it into Photoshop and texture over it. So go ahead and pick your location. Pick a spot on the D drive or a desktop or wherever. Desktop will get erased, um, so D drive is good. And go ahead and call it UVs. UVS and hit save and then change the X and Y to 1024 by 1024 and there's a drop down in image format and you want to change that scroll all the way to the bottom and change it to Targa all right, so why that particular style? Uh, so typically in games, like if you're making a weapon or if you're making a character or if you're making an environment set piece, you want to use the smallest size texture that you can to, sh to make it look as pretty as you can, right, for efficiency purposes. Um, typically with a character, um, like if you're working at a game company and you go to a programmer and you say, hey, I'm a character artist, I'm making a character, how big should the texture size be? The programmer would know the answer to that question because they would have kind of predetermined stuff for how much they – they lay out how much crap's going to be in the game initially, and they kind of guess. And so they would have kind of a. So you, you typically, characters are like anywhere like 2046 by 2046 to like whatever. A small weapon could be 1024 by 1024 or 512 by 512. It just all matters on the type of game you're making. If you're making a mobile game, texture size is going to be much smaller. If you're making a game like Gears of War, texture size is going to be huge. You know what I'm saying? It just all depends. Okay. We're just doing this. This is kind of a standard right, right. Okay. exercise. What's a target? Like what's a target format? So a, a targa is like, it's a texture format that you can include transparency inside of it. So if you're making like a window or something, you can like include like the transparency information within the texture. Does that, does that make sense? It does make sense. It has layers, kind of. Right. All right. Uh, so PNG also has transparency inside of it, but it's used a different way. And Targas have transparency inside of them, and it's used in an alpha channel. PNGs have a transparency, like, within the image itself. It's just different images have different ways of working. 
that makes sense. It's hard to like make a JPEG more, is it's hard different. To make it more accessible on our end, like whenever we need to work on it. it it's just different ways to work with it. Um, I can show you that. Um, but basically, like I mean, there's all kinds of different fo image yeah, formats. There's there's JPEGs, there's Targas, there's PNGs, there's bitmaps, there's um, I mean, there's a ton of them. I mean, they're all on this list here. Uh, but it just all kind of depends. There's GIFs. It just all depends on what you're making, you know. And and like, the engines only use really JPEG, PNG, and Targa, and maybe TIFF, maybe. So anyway, so save it out. 1024 by 1024. Change it to a Targa, and hit OK. And then go find that file and drag it into Photoshop. And it should look like this. All right, so hopefully you can remember which sides you used for which. So let's go into a, uh, a browser, a web browser. Anyone will work and go to Google. And in Google, I want you to search for wood. And go ahead and click on images. And then go to search tools and change that from size to large. And pick a cool looking wood texture and save that to the area that you were save all your stuff to and call it wood. No penis jokes. Wow. I want you to find another one for metal. And then find one for stone. So wood, metal, and stone. Yeah, that's not stone. Oh, oh, was that like Sharon Stone or something? Oh, actually, just touch that texture to make sure. Here, I just check my wood against that texture. Wood, metal, and stone. You should have three. Don't take a whole lot of time choosing these. Um, you know, it's not a big deal. Just pick some wood, metal, and stone. And then what you're going to do is you're going to drag these in Photoshop. And you're going to move these within these boxes. Okay? Pretty simple stuff. And remember, if you hold Shift, you can keep proportions. And you can also drop the opacity. So you can make sure that you're going over the gray lines here. Uh, on the right-hand side, there's a thing that says opacity. And you can also use the arrows on your keyboard to move these by the pixel. And you can also duplicate layers by right-clicking on them and going to duplicate layer and moving these over as well. Take up more space. Yeah, you want wood in one, metal in one, and remember you can al you can also flip images horizontal 
to match sides to erase seams. Can we put them on separate layer or no? Um Yeah. You can, if if need be. All that business. So just quick, quick. No need to to make a masterpiece here. We're just learning. Remember, you can rasterize these and erase certain sections if you need to. Just like we erase the clouds on our. You want to cover the lines in a perfect world. I mean. All right, let's take another two minutes and finish this up. And when you're done, you can raise your opacity back up on your images so that they're at full. Something there. Sorry, I didn't want to wrap up. Okay, um, we're almost done with this, uh, and I'm recording it. So, um, actually, I actually have a uh, recording of this already. You got your headphones with you? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, go ahead and fire up the computer, and I'll show you how to get to what we got so far. Give it a chance. Can you show me the uh, broadcaster settings again? Yeah. I mean, basically, all you're doing is you're just changing it from file in, in broadcast settings, file output only, mm -hmm. to MP4. Yeah. And then you set up hotkeys to start recording and stop recording. And then you just right click in sources and make that a window or monitor capture, depending yeah. on what you want to do. That's it. And then you just you hit your hotkey and start. And hit your hotkey. So mine recorded like the entire time, but when I went to go in and view it, it was just black the whole time. So I think I messed up some of your settings there. <laughs> I mean, you go to view and turn off unchecked snap. Um, I mean, I can just try it all over again. Try, try, it, try it again, but just try a quick one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try a couple quick ones. Yeah, I'll try. It again. You know how to use OBS. Can you help him? 
Okay, everybody here? Anybody not here? Okay, let's go ahead and move on here. Doesn't have to be perfect, you guys. Um, okay, so the next step we're going to do here is we've actually got these these uh, gray boxes behind our um, our textures here, and that's your bottom layer, your background layer. Go ahead and turn that layer off. You don't need the background layer. So you should have, like, transparency. These checker box behind there, transparent, that's okay. We don't ever want to bring those lines in. And uh, so the next concept I want to show you, um, I want to do some transparency stuff, but I kind of don't. Um, all right, so in so go to go to uh, go to layers. There's there's a little there's these little tabs up here, and go, and go to channels. So this is what I was talking about with the Targa earlier. There's an alpha channel in here. That's included. Go ahead and trash that alpha channel. Click the little trash can at the bottom right. So you click on channels tab, and there's a black alpha channel. Go ahead and trash that. There's a little trash can at the bottom right. So select it and click the little trash can. We don't want an alpha channel right now. All right. Okay, so now we're going to save this out. So go to File, Save As. And uh, we want to save it as a target again, not a PSD. And this time we're going to call it Texture. So save it as a target and call it Texture. And then hit Save. And now we got some settings here. We've got 16, 24, and 32. Uh, you will never use 16. 24 is what you'll use if there's nothing transparent in this image. And 32 is what you'll use if you have transparency in here that you've done in Photoshop. So what do I mean by that? So for example, if I was texturing a crowbar, crowbar has no area of it that is transparent, so I'll use 24. If I was texturing a window, um, window is most likely transparent, so I'll use 32. Does that make sense? So for this guy, we're just going to do 24. So click 24, hit OK. We don't want to compress it. And now let's go back into Maya. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change this UV texture panel to... Uh, the hypershade. So go to panels, panel, hypershade. Panels, panel, hypershade in Maya. 24 bit, yeah. My hypershade is already shaded. Good. Okay. So it should look like this. I don't know what that means. Um, try holding on your space bar. And there's a little line that goes off to the right in the upper. Right click. And then there should be something that says uh, Hypershade Perspective. Hypershade Perspective. See that one? Hello? What do you mean? Yeah. Your name, your first name, last name, intro Wednesday. You got it. What? The name of the file. The name of the assignment you can put in the email.
Yeah, hyper shade perspective. So you can just hold down your space bar, and there's a little line that goes up to the right. Right click above that line. May take a couple clicks. Yeah, and then it says hyper shade persp. Hyper shade slash persp. Okay. Everybody here. Everybody needs to be here or you will get lost. I'm already lost. I'm just going to Don't be lost. Okay, so the two main things that I texture with here, these are shaders that Maya has. Um, I use Lambert's and blends. Very simple. Lambert's are not shiny. Blends are shiny. So depending on what you have on your object, uh, you'll choose to be shiny. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Lambert. So where it says Lambert, click on Lambert. It's like a little, the little, little, look where my mouse is. Right, so, and then you go into the upper right hand corner of Lambert 2 and name that to uh, Not Shiny. And you can see where I'm typing up here. Not Shiny. And then hit Enter on your keyboard. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to create a blin, and we're going to call this one shiny. Enter. And that's it, guys. Class complete. Yep. Now we're done. Sorry. All right, everybody here. Okay, cool. So double click on not shiny. And on the right hand side, the attribute editor will open up. And you see a bunch of stuff here color, transparency, shiny, all kinds of stuff. Uh, go ahead and where it says color, all the way to the right is a black and white checker box. So again, double click on not shiny. Look where my mouse is. This, the, the ball. Double click on that. Okay. And on the right-hand side, it should say color, and to the far right is a black and white checkered box. <laughs> Click on that. And another window will pop up, and there's a green thing that says file. You want to click on file. And then in your file attributes on the right, you can scroll down, and there's a little yellow folder. You look where my mouse is, and you can see it. Go ahead and click that little yellow folder, and find the texture file on wherever you had it. Click that little yellow folder and you want to find texture.tga and hit OK. Now there's a couple of ways we can apply this to this object here. The first way you can apply it is you can click on your object and uh, Make sure your object is selected on the 3D view here. Right click on not shiny, right click and hold, and it'll say assign material to selection. You can also middle mouse drag it to the object. And when it's on there, go ahead and hit, hit six on your keyboard, the number six in the perspective view, and the texture should show up in Maya. So we have a box with textures on it. Everybody here? Anybody not here? What's that? All right, go ahead and find it. All right, and for all you rock stars, <coughs> load the same texture like we just did onto Shiny. And this time around, you want to apply it to just the faces of the metal. Yeah, so, so load the file onto Shiny as well. Double click the blend of Shiny. So double click Shiny. Load the file in the same way. Click on the checkered black and white checker box next to color. Click file. Load the file in. Texture, same file. But this time, instead of applying it to the whole object, you can just click faces yeah, right click on your object, select faces. 
and then r once the faces are selected, the metal faces, right click on shiny, apply them selection. And you can see now shiny, if you rotate it in the light, it will be shiny. What's up? Yeah, we're going to do bumps too. So let's make a new texture actually, another one or another shader, another Lambert. And we're going to call it, um, so create a new Lambert. And this one we're going to call bumps. And hit enter. And go ahead and pick the same texture. So texture again, load it on color. No. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You can actually shrink the size of your work area. There's these little icons on the left. If it's too much. So now click on bumps at one time and you'll come back to where it says color. And you can scroll down and yeah, there's bump mapping. So go ahead and click the texture for bump mapping and you want to go ahead and apply that to the faces, apply bumps to the faces of the rocks. Yeah. Um, although I think I think you have to Um, it's definitely not above your pay grade. <laughs> Man, uh, I actually don't know exactly how that works from a programmatic standpoint, but. Yeah, I don't know how that works. It's some sort of trick, though, I assume. What happened? Uh-huh. So we've got shiny side, we got a bumpy side, and we have wood. Now one thing that I thought was cool the other day is on the shiny stuff, um, we can actually, if you go back into Google and type in like uh, dusk and pull like a really pretty like dusk image. Save that. In your shiny texture, if you click on shiny, you can go to, uh, I think it's specular color, and load that uh, dusk map in. 
and it'll use the dusk map as like an environment map. So like as you can see now, my shine is reflecting that dusk map. So it's using it like, for example, if the if that dusk was in the background, and it was sh using it as a dusk map. Did everybody get that? <laughs> Save a dusk map, an image, then in Maya, click on shiny, and you just scroll down to where it says specular color, and load in your dusk map, just like you load all the other textures in, but you want to load it on specular color. Yeah, it works exactly the same as any other. You're confused on the bump part? Yeah. Did you load in? Okay, so. So on bumps, so click on bumps, where it says bump mapping. You click on that little thingy to the right. And now, did you load the texture in? Is there a texture? And it's not doing anything? This isn't really the best way to do a bump map. The best way to do a bump map is like through a normal map. Um, but we're not going to go over normal maps in this class. Arvin goes over that in. The what? Oh, there we go. That that's one thing that you can adjust is the bump Sorry. bump depth. So, okay. So, s if you look up at my screen here, so there's a bump depth slider and it changes the angle of the bump. That's how you know if it's working. Look up on my screen, you guys. See how I'm changing the angle of the light the way it hits the bump? Yeah, so you can tweak that to make it work best for your image so it gives the best depth. Like that looks like a pretty looks like some rocks. See, that looks pretty good. What's that? So yeah I mean from the side it's an illusion right so this stuff only works when you're looking kind of directly at it. Now if you, this was a normal map um, the normal maps are pretty pretty good these days but like if I were to like render this in Maya like let's see Eh, looks pretty crappy, but the stuff we're doing is game engine stuff. So this is this is all kind of rendering techniques. Um, I'm trying to think, if there's anything else? <coughs> all right. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys was transparency and making tweaks to stuff. So what I want you to do is go back into Photoshop <coughs> and. Uh, Go back into that channels tab where we deleted that alpha map. And down at the bottom next to the trash can is something that says create uh, create new channel. Go ahead and create a new channel. And it's going to be a black alpha channel. Okay. And then all I want you to do is just select the paintbrush. And in one of those areas that you can remember, um, in the bottom right, go ahead and just paint a white area like this. Just a white spot. Do it in kind of your bottom right hand corner. Most of you guys kind of followed what I did. 
and then change your change your color of that paintbrush to about 50% gray and then paint kind of a bullseye. So you should have a white and then gray, 50% gray spot. You want to paint on the black alpha channel. When you create a new alpha channel, it should be black. You're not painting in layers, we're painting on channels now. Okay, resave out this Targa. <clears throat> so file save as. Save it over the the texture one that you have, and this time call uh, 32 bit. Because we're gonna we're gonna keep that um, we're gonna keep that transparency. 32 bit, very important. Save it as a Targa. Save it over your last one. 32 bit. Save. I go back into Maya. All right, and now what we're going to do is we're going to click on Not Shiny and go all the way over to Color. Actually, we don't even need to reload that. Just see where it says Transparency. Go ahead and load that tra uh, load your that map same map in on the Transparency, just like we load in all our other maps. And now look at your image. So can anybody tell me what we actually just did there? So So white, white fully shows what you want to show. Black hides, and 50% gray is 50% transparent. So anything in between in any of those areas will, will blend the way you want it. So you can see how like the 50% transparent, like if I had like a window with some grime on it, you know what I'm saying? You could show the grime on the window. Yeah, you, you just probably missed it. Okay, guys, so that's how you do sh some bumps, some shines, some. some yeah. Is it looking like this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is if the background was the background was reflective. You just get completely transparent. Yeah. You loaded it in on not shiny. Yeah. Now, can you move that alpha channel up and down so you can see what you're working with? Like, you're trying to color in and stuff like that, or are you just going to guess it over? Uh, no, you, you, I just bring down. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, the only other thing I want to show you guys, so this is like a really good way to texture stuff. Um, like if you have like a sword or something, you just project the, the entire, like the entire blade or the entire handle or, or whatever, and then you just lay stuff on it in Photoshop. Uh, the other thing is, like, if you make any one of these primitives, and in your UV texture editor, you'll see that they all kind of start with, um, basic UVs, and for, like, a cylinder or something, like, this is what you want to use. I mean, these are, these are, like, perfect, and a trick to, like, if, if you got a bunch of intersecting stuff here and it's hard to grab the right stuff, you select some UVs and go select, select shell, and it gets the entire thing. So you can select a few, select, select shell, select, select shell. Remember that, that is a very, very useful thingy. And as you can see from like a pyramid, same sort of deal, UVs, select, select shell, move those around, and they all kind of have their base stuff. Um, okay, so like cylinder here. So like, these are the caps, the bottom and the top, obviously, and this is it's completely laid out. It 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 like if you if you cut it, yeah, if you cut it down a seam and unrolled it out, basically. So you can you can also like right click on these faces and see see how you're seeing which faces. What's that? I don't know. Test it. Anyway, that's it. But for the majority of your stuff, you're going to use planar mapping. Okay? And make sure, always make sure that um, keep image width height ratios on and you're doing it in the right axis. And we're going to stop there, you guys. Uh, I'm just going to let you guys kind of roll with your weapons and, and just give it a shot.